بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Dear viewers, welcome to this evening here at the Youth Center, Yasin Youth Center um, We're going towards the end of our winter program Alhamdulillah, we have a special guest with us today, our beloved brother Elias Mayo from Canada. Zakallah khair. I don't think we're meant to be shaking hands or anything like that. I'm not going to refuse it. But it's going to be difficult. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Welcome to uh, London. So, you've been here for nearly a week or so? Something like that. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Zakallah khair for inviting me. It's our pleasure. Really Appreciate happy that you made it here live in person and we can get to, inshallah ta'ala, know. Uh, the character behind the uh, artist uh, Ilyas Mayo and we wanted to thank you for your support for Yasin Youth all the way from Canada you've been showing us uh, your support you've helped us also open this youth center because of your support um, allowing people to donate and help us open this place Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Um, so how, how are you finding London so far? You know, at least I escaped the winter storms in Canada Oh, you have winter storms? Well, right now, now it's like it's icy, you know what I'm saying? So Alhamdulillah, I escaped that. Uh, came into a tier four lockdown, but Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, you know, Alhamdulillah. We can't really complain because, you know, not, not everything's the same anymore, yeah. right? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. But Alhamdulillah, I'm, fi I'm finding it okay, um, you know, spending a lot of family time. Yeah. Right? And that is, uh, that's very, very important. Absolutely. You know, um, and Alhamdulillah, that's all I can say. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So you're, you have family here and you're here to, to visit the family. Exactly. So Excellent. I'm visiting family. My in-laws are here. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's time to connect, you know, with, with the family and everything. And how are you finding the weather here in London? It's, it's cold or it's nothing compared to you? <laughs> it's, I wouldn't say it's nothing. Yeah. You guys have a different kind of cold. Mm, it's like yeah. it goes through the bones. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, the kind of yeah. cold that you guys have. But yeah. Alhamdulillah, it's you know it's it's not as bad as Canada mm. right now. So I think right now we're one degree or yeah. minus one degrees in Canada is what mi minus thirty. That's soft. <laughs> yeah, it's like minus ten, minus. Wow. It's gonna reach to minus twenty. Subhanallah. Yeah, around February time. And in Canada, you're from uh, Toronto. Yeah, Toronto area. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah. And is it true that every day you have to um, you know, clean the car um, and kind of clean up from the house and um, where the garage is. You have yeah. to clear it, clear out so all yeah, the house you gotta, every day. If you have a house, if you live in a, you know, a house. So usually our houses, um, you know, we, we have a, gar a garage yeah. and then a driveway and then a, a sidewalk. Mm. So you got to shovel. Every morning. Every, not every morning. I mean, yeah. if it snows and it, it yeah. becomes, you know, you don't want it to be icy. Right. Right where cars would just slide down, you know. Right. You don't want your car to go that to the can street, happen. right? Yeah, that mm. can happen. So um, yeah, we have a lot of like you know winter activities. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And do people? Uh, is it the norm to do skiing there? Yeah, I mean, in the winter, uh, people love doing winter sports. Mm. Whether it's skating, whether it's skiing, snowboarding, right. it's fun. Yeah. It's yeah. really fun and. Um, you know, it's 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 also physical. You don't want to mm. just stay at home, mm. right? You want to go out, and it's not bad. Like mm. even if it's minus fifteen, you put on your jacket, you bundle up, you put on your gloves, you mm. know, mm. That's and you job. you have fun. You have fun, you know. It's, it's really fun, actually. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you know how to ski? I I know how to ski, but I don't know how to snowboard. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Snowboarding is a bit harder, right? It's a bit harder. It's yeah. there's more. I don't know. With skiing, I just find it. I, I never tried snowboarding, mm. Mm. but skiing is fun. I, yeah. I like skiing. Yeah. Yeah. We went actually with uh, a year ago, uh, same time today actually. We w we went skiing uh, with Abdurrahim Green, one oh, of yeah. the da'is, and lots of youngsters. Um, so I tried it for the first time, and the first day was horrible. Oh. <laughs> I didn't get to enjoy it. I, get, I kept tripping and falling yeah. all the time. But after some time, after the hardship comes the ease. In of course. Yusra. Of course. Um, so then it became more enjoyable, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Where did you guys go? You we mind? went to France oh, um, yeah. in the borders, on the borders of um, Switzerland. So it was oh, very yeah. Oh, that area, area is so beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very beautiful. It, it's a big resort. Um, I think there's, there's been some Olympic Games in that same okay. area before. 
Okay, mashallah. Yeah. So you were born and brought up in, in, in Canada, right? Most of your life is in, is I in Canada. I wasn't born in Canada, right. but I was raised in Canada. Mm. Uh, I was actually born in Somalia. Okay. And um, when I was two years old, uh, right before the war, uh, we had mm. moved to Pakistan. Right. And we spent um, around six years in Pakistan. Really? Wow. It, it was sort of like us getting stuck in that country. Wow, from Somalia all from the way Somalia, to Pakistan. Yeah, okay. so basically Pakistan was just a detour, mm. but it became a six-year detour. So, you know, it is what it is. We, yeah. you know, we, we were living there. We went to school in Pakistan. Really? Yeah, we Speak were. Speak Urdu? I forgot Urdu, unfortunately. Mm. I wish I still could speak, you know, m multiple languages, but um, I moved to Canada when I was eight years old. Right. And we were learning English at the time, right? Mm. So we didn't really have people to... We, we weren't practicing Urdu yeah, as we, yeah, you know. Mm. So we forgot... I forgot Urdu, but my older brothers, they still, they're still fluent mm. in Urdu, yeah. It would have been useful here in the UK. I know, I know. <laughs> it's like I a know. third of the Muslims are, are speaking I know. Urdu. I love languages. Uh, yeah. If I if I could go back in time, to be honest with you, I would learn a lot of languages. Yeah. yeah like nice. if I imagine being 17, you know, and you're practicing languages mm -hmm. within one year, you can. Yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely. So I would I would do Arabic. That's my first and foremost. Yes, I would love course. to do Arabic. Yeah. Um, I tried Chinese. Okay. <laughs> I tried Chinese, uh, Spanish, and French. Right. Okay. Yeah. Those are the languages that I would love to. You mm. know. But in, in Canada, I believe they, they teach English and French, right? They do, yeah. yeah. So French is the second language in yeah. Canada. Mm. So with every packaging that you see, they have the right. French language on it as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. And there's certain uh, regions, uh, certain areas they speak French. Right? That's right. Yeah. yeah, it's called Quebec. Yeah, okay. It's a, it's a province within Canada. Mm. They speak French. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's yeah. very interesting. It definitely yeah. is. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So tell us about you, you know your life growing up in in Canada. What was that like? So um, when I moved to Canada, uh, I was eight years old, um, and it was a complete. So imagine. <laughs> wow. That's a late late firework. From <laughs> late <yesterday>. firework. <laughs> Uh, they didn't get the memo. <laughs> so um, when we moved to Pakistan, I was young. I, I you know, yeah. we obviously, um, you know, integrated within the society. Mm. My mom learned how to, you know, make Pakistani dishes. Mm. We went to school, like public school in Pakistan. So we learned Urdu, right? And imagine now coming to another country, learning mm. English. Mm. Cold, obviously. We we yeah. landed uh, on mm. a. On um, when was it? We landed in December. Actually, it was oh, a winter. Right. Ex exact. Yeah, it was December. It was cold. We saw snow for the first time. Mm. Right. So it was very interesting. It was it was a nice journey. Mm. We um, Alhamdulillah, we we made friends. Now, when we moved to Canada, we grew up in a smaller city. We didn't grow up in the big city. Yeah. So my city is called Guelph, Guelph, okay. Ontario. It's right. it's 50 minute drive from Toronto. And there were not many Muslims around at the time. Mm. There was only one small masjid. Alhamdulillah, at least there was a masjid. Yeah. We went to madrasa. Uh, we learned, you know, we were going to madrasa in Pakistan as well. But, yeah. you know, we, at least we also got to, you know, uh, go to madrasa in Canada. Right. And throughout that time, I never really, you know, I, I wasn't really into anything. I was just growing up. I was a yeah. regular kid, you yeah, know. Yeah. Growing up in Canada, and Alhamdulillah, it was a nice, it was mm. a nice journey, and uh, at least you know, it was not like we, we lost ourselves moving okay. to a new country, you know, That's where good. some people lose themselves, yeah, of right? Course, yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, it was very, it was very nice. It was a good journey, and I think that was that made us able to adapt. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we were able to adapt and yeah, and we still live in that city, mm. Guelph, Ontario. Okay, alhamdulillah. Yeah. And what's the Muslim community like there and what's the, the non-Muslim community like, or I would like to call it the, the wider community? Right, so in Guelph, um, like of course with any other city, it grows, right? Yeah. So Guelph has transformed into a little small town to like a, a metropolitan city. Right. Um, I know you're going to laugh at this, but now we have three masajids. 
in the, in the city. Okay. So when, when we first came, <laughs> there was only one masjid, a small little house. Serious. You know, wow. they made it into a masjid. But now, and who built that? that masjid? Which community? Uh, yeah, so, so I think um, uh, back in the 80s or the 70s, there were a couple of Muslims that came to Guelph. They used to, they used to like uh, have a musalla in the basement. Come on, I made you come back, bro. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Can you just tell the audience what happened five minutes ago over there? Uh, what happened was, you know, uh, I'm not on my A game today. I mean, you know, <laughs> didn't sleep well last night. Uh, but uh, alhamdulillah, though. You know, you, you the brotherhood uh, is more important, is it? Of course, of course. Make your brother smile and laugh, make your brother happy. Of course. Make him feel victorious. Of course. That's, of course. that's more important. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel very good. Victorious. <laughs> I should be humble, though. So I shouldn't. Yeah. I shouldn't feel too good. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but Subhanallah. You know, um, one of the greatest things that I, I love about Islam is this concept of uh, brotherhood, khuwa. Right. And it's amazing how someone can be from Canada, another person can be from the UK, another Muslim can be from China, from Brazil, but we share the same Iman. Sah. Yeah, we all have our own specific exclusive journeys of life, but we all have one thing in common that we believe in Allah, we believe in the Akhirah, and we always remember that. And we're trying to, you know, reach to the afterlife. And then together, um, you know, we will be reunited in, in, in paradise. I mean. And it's so important to meet your brothers in Islam, to increase the brotherhood, the khuwa. And one thing I found strange is when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us to, that prayers in uh, Masjid al-Nabawi is equal to 1,000 salah. And what I found uh, amazing and strange is that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it's 1,000 salah Yet, on a Saturday, he didn't used to pray in his masjid. He used to pray in Masjid Quba. Hmm. So why would he leave, you know, praying in Masjid al Nabawi and go and uh, go to pray in Masjid Quba on a Saturday every Saturday? Do you to connect with uh, the, the the brothers, isn't it? Subhanallah, exactly. Subhanallah, that's because awesome. you know, like creating that that strong brotherhood is more important than personal good deeds. Right. Uh, sometimes, Subhanallah. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's amazing that you're here in London and we're spending some time with you. Uh, Jazakallah khair for it's accepting our invitation for being here in the youth center. Alhamdulillah. And today's going to be a bit different. So people know you usually, um, you know, um, uh, you know, performing. Mm. But we don't know the person behind uh, the performer. So we'd like to get to know a bit about you, inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah inshallah. subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to bless this gathering. Um, uh -huh. So... Tell us a bit about you, your background, where are you from, uh, where did you uh, grow up, and just a bit about life, you know, uh, as, as a child. Inshallah. Uh, no, Jazakallah khair for having me, Sheikh. Uh, it's, it's really a pleasure being here with, you know, with you. And, you know, and, and as you said, like the Ukhuwa is, I feel like I've known you for, for years, you know, but we just met this year. SubhanAllah. Well, well I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, the new year. <laughs> the new year. <laughs> So where do I begin? It was last year. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so it all started from Adam alayhi <laughs> salam. <laughs> How long are we going back, bro? Our, our father, you know. <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> but it was called the, the real night. The real, the real evening with Ilyas <laughs> Um So I was born in Somalia. Okay. Um, I was, 
I was raised in Pakistan. Yeah. And then I was raised in Canada as well. Pakistan. Okay. Yeah. So because, sorry, I need to interrupt you here because yeah. on in the comments uh, when when I say your name to people. They say, oh, the, the, the Pakistani brother, the Bengali brother. <laughs> yeah. say, no, he's, he's from Somalia. <laughs> right, right. So where does that come from? So we um, are a tribe in, in Somalia called Rer Hamar. Rer Hamar. Rer Hamar. Rer Hamar, okay. Ahlul Hamar. Okay, okay. Hamar means Mogadishu. Right, okay. Right, Hamar is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, a different name for Mogadishu. So right. we're the people of Mogadishu. So we've been there for years. Right, so I'm pretty sure, um, you know, even you, you've, you've heard, like, even mm. people from, like, say, Nigeria, there are people yeah. ha that have green eyes, from, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, at the end of the day, you know, yes, we are mixed somehow with another culture, yeah. but everybody's mixed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there are people course. from Afghanistan that have blonde hair, blue yeah, eyes, yeah, you yeah. know, they're mixed with Russian, they're people. Mm. So, as far as I know, you know, we, we've been there for many years. Mm, mm. Um, now, uh, back, I guess, you know, uh, right before the war, mm. uh, we had this little uh, corruption going on in Somalia. Mm. This was probably 89, 90. Yeah, yeah. So, our house was robbed okay. while we were in, in the house. So, I was a baby. I was, I was a kid, you know. Uh, I was probably one, one and a half. Sure. And um, there were guys that came in, uh, held us at a gunpoint, right? And uh, they took my mom's jewelry, everything. Uh, now, we were traumatized. And my father was, you know, after that incident, uh, I'm like, literally gunpoint. All my uncles, my father, my aunties, they were, you know, tied uh, on the ground. This is by the, the, the government or like a rebel group? The rebel group. Okay. Now, after that incident, my father wanted like sort of like a, a fresh air. Because yeah. we were all traumatized, right? Yeah, of course. So we went to Pakistan for just for a vacation. Yeah, okay. Because my, my, my father was thinking, you know what? Situation's not good here. We need to look... To, oh, you know, yeah. so we went to Pakistan, all of us, you know, we, we just, and then subhanAllah, two weeks later, the civil war in Somalia broke out. Okay. So Literally we two weeks. Yeah. Before the civil war. Yeah. Okay. So Pakistan was just a short stay. And yeah. Then we come back it was just it. like a little, you know. And Pakistan is, uh, you know, it's not next door. It's not no. the usual country to have was, a holiday. It was so. either like Pakistan or India. Okay, India, right. So my cousin was working for the UN and uh, he was based in Peshawar. Pakistan. Okay, right. So he would commute back and forth and he was, sure. you know, he was like, I'm here, you know, check, check okay. this place out. It's kind of sure, cool. Sure. This was 91, 90, mm -hmm. 90, 91. And uh, yeah, we, we moved there and then we got stuck there. Um, mm. We spent six years of our, our, our lives in Pakistan. Cool. Then we moved to Canada uh, in 96 mm. and we, uh, you know, established our lives and everything. And yeah, alhamdulillah, that's the... That's where I come from. Mashallah, that's a very yeah. interesting uh, story. Right. Mashallah, M many people don't know that the, the Muslim community that we have in Canada or the UK, mm -hmm. everyone has a story. Of course. Know, that we didn't come to the West uh, for no reason. Right. Uh, many of us, you know, our fathers came for, for a better life or some of them were, you know, running away from a war. From, exactly. Yeah, SubhanAllah. So in Pakistan, uh, what was it like growing up there? You, you know, everyone's... Most people are Pakistanis. There isn't really much of a Somali community, no. I'm guessing. So there's a small Somali. At that time, there was a small Somali community. Um, but yeah, grew, growing up in Pakistan it was interesting. I I, I remember bits and pieces. Um, we went to school there. Um, you know, we we sort of integrated with the society um, and we learned the language. We were mm. speaking Urdu. Nice. At one point, I was fluent in Urdu. Nice. Right. So. You know, it was it was it was nice. It was a, it was quite the experience. Mm. It, it became a normal life for us, right? Mm, mm, mm. And um, yeah, it was it was good. We went to uh, madrasa nice. in Pakistan. Mm. Awesome. Um, if I had just stayed, I think a couple years later, mm. a couple couple years longer, I would have memorized the Quran in Pakistan because mm. we were like fast tracking, like we yeah, were memorizing they some of the best madrasas. Yeah, yeah. In fact, all the madrasas that spread all over the world, they originated. 
from India, Pakistan. Right, right. Um, but that's 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 amazing, mashallah. So do you, do you think that the you know the Pakistani people they welcomed you guys and they, they made you feel you know uh, s safe and home and so on? Um, in the beginning, there was a lot of you know there were issues, right? Because we looked different, right? Yeah. We um, we were the outsiders, right? Yeah. So in the beginning, you have problems, you know. You, mm. Like us kids, we would fight, <laughs> you know. Like <laughs> people would pick up, pick up, pick on us because we were different. And then, you know. So Alhamdulillah, in the end, we were all like friends. We yeah. were speaking Urdu. We were, you know. So Accepted, it's yeah. always in the beginning yeah. where it's a little harder, mm -hmm. you know. So maybe here in the UK, it's not that bad. <laughs> you have fit right in, man. You just <laughs> <laughs> hey, those are my people. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Right. So Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah you know that yeah. was uh, quite the experience, and then. We moved to Canada in 1996. Right. Um, I guess for the, for the Canadian dream, or you know, mm. whatever Why you Canada? want to call it. Why not America? Why not the UK? Again, you know, uh, we so we come from a big family, and our families spread out. Okay. So we have family in Europe, okay. Asia, uh, North America, right? So my uncle was living in. Canada at the time, he was doing his PhD, okay, sure. and again, same story, he's like, hey, I'm here, why don't you guys come here, it's a nice cool place, right? Another holiday. <laughs> Another, <laughs> exactly. Another 20 years holiday. Exactly. <laughs> so six years. Not yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, the, you see, the thing is, like, our parents wanted the best for us, mm -hmm. best education, best life, you know? Mm -hmm. So I guess that's, you know, mm -hmm. part of the, the aim was to go to a Western country, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So um, we ended up in Canada, went to school there, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, you know, um, it was it was it was similar situation. The first couple of months, it mm -hmm. was really hard getting used to the new yeah. rea reality, mm -hmm. right? We would, again, people would pick up, pick on us. Yeah. Mm -hmm bullying and all of that right but we had to do our thing right mm, 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 we had to do our mm. thing we come from somalia i mean we had to we had, <laughs> to, we had to rise up we, you gotta <laughs> rise up you gotta defend yourself you know you have to defend yourself yeah. i come from a big family Mashallah. there's eight boys in my household mm. you know so, so. But, but i did mention rise up and we're gonna get into you know um the the tracks that you recorded and you perform later on but while we're at, at rise up uh, so rise up came out, I think, a year ago? No, no uh, it came out in 2017. 17, okay, three 2017, years now, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like an empowering message and, mm -hmm. you know, defending. There, there was kind of, I felt like there was a um, human rights or, 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 or even black activism in there. Can, right. can you tell us what the message behind it was? So Rise Up was, um, so basically it was to, you know, to basically stand up for yourself, mm. you know, we 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 love our dean. We're not gonna we're not gonna you know um, accept the bullying and all of that. Mm. We're not gonna tolerate that, Good right? Um, and it's sort of like a, a you know an educational piece where we're teaching the people don't just listen to the media and trust the media, mm. right? Because they say bad things about Muslims, mm. right? So so in the end, uh, Brother Buna says, it doesn't matter uh, what color you are, mm. what culture you are, your skin, whatever, mm. as long as we unite mm. and rise up against injustice. Brilliant. Yeah. So that was basically the, 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 you know, the, the gist of the song. Mm. Um, Mashallah. And uh, yeah, Mu Muslim Bilal is also uh, featured mm. on that yeah. as well. Maybe perhaps we will play the, the video later on, inshallah. But yeah, it's a, it was a very empowering, especially the video um, and the acting, you can say, the way you, you were walking and mm -hmm. uh, the brothers behind. It was the first time I see something like this, um, like coming from the, the Nasheed industry, let's say. Right. Um, but it's before different. we speak about the Nasheed, uh, so I believe growing up, uh, of course, Canada, like the UK, like America, the entertainment industry is the biggest industry. So of course. movies, media, films, uh, music especially, very music, powerful. Yeah. Every single young person must have been influenced or impacted by music in the West. Yeah. And I can, um, is it safe for me to say that you are also one of that 
product of the environment where you were influenced by music and uh, it, it played a part in your life? Of course, absolutely. So growing up, you know, there's there. So I'm I'm exposed to like all types of genres: pop, you know, hip hop, this, uh, rock, country, even like uh, Hindi music. Okay. I was, I was uh, you know, that came because from Pakistan. Pakistan, yeah. So we, we it's got like your breakfast. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're exposed to Somali music, mm. Hindi music, Arabi, English, you name it. Mm. And me, I come from a very creative background. Like my mm. both sides of, of my family, mm. they're into arts, creative arts. Right. Um, visual arts, nice. fashion, mm. right? So I come from a creative family, nice right? Sure. So, um, and, and art was always my thing. Even like when I was in elementary, high school, I think you guys call it, yeah, elementary school, right? Mm. From kindergarten to grade eight, yeah, grade cool. nine to grade 12. Secondary school. Secondary, <laughs> yeah, so. Elementary art class, yeah, <laughs> elementary, yeah, right? Um, so art class, I would like, I enjoyed it. I would enjoy it. <laughs> you know, I would, I would draw like, it, it, you know, I, w I was, I was also like uh, into art, right? Mm. So, but music was my main thing. Mm. I, f I felt the music. Mm. Uh, you know, my, it runs through my blood. Right. Every day I would walk and I would just play a sound in my head, a melody mm. while I'm walking. You know, so it was not until grade eight when I asked the question, hey, you know what? I wish there was a way mm. to translate these sounds into make it into a reality. Wow. And then I um, discovered this software called uh, Fruity Loops. Right. And that's when I started, you know, making those mm. those mini beats. Mm. Um, and yeah, and I, it just grew from there. So it starts with kind of an imagination, right? You have yeah. something going on inside your yeah. brain. It's musical, you know, and then... You know, like in a way, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting to find out uh, how music is created. Like, mm -hmm. where does it get inspired from? How do people make melodies and, mm. and sounds that, that sound different? And, you know, how does that happen? It's, it's very, very, it's, it's amazing the way, it, the way it all comes together. Mm. Like, I... Inshallah, one of these days, you know, we'll go into the studio and then you'll see something forming from nothing, <laughs> you know, yeah. like the way we put things together. It's like mm. a, it's like you're in a lab mm. and you put the ingredients in there. It's like cooking. Huh? <laughs> it's like cooking. Exactly. Or painting. Right, you have okay. all these uh, colors and you yeah. just, you know. And then it becomes finished product. Exactly. Okay. It's similar mm. to that. Same, mm. same concept. Yeah. So you, mm. if you start with one melody. And you just build upon that, mm. add more melodies until it becomes, and then you add the lyrics, and then it, mm. sometimes people have the lyrics first, mm. and then they work. They convert it. Yeah, they, they, they work. a melody for it. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. So okay. With, with, with creativity, there are, there are no rules. Yeah. I, I don't like to follow rules at mm. all. I would, make, I would make a track without a metronome sometimes. Mm. So you it's know? okay to be messy, like... It's okay. Uh, it's not about it being simple and one, two, three. Exactly. Mm -hmm. M being messy is interesting sometimes. Which is similar to art, I guess. Exactly. So I, I went to uh, this one studio in Birmingham, and uh, I'm pretty sure you know this name, Muhammad Aerosol Ali. Yeah, of course. He, he was meant to do the graffiti for us. Here. Yeah, so yeah, I went to winner. a studio. Okay. Everything's everywhere. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. whoa, look at this place, right? He's yeah. like... I cannot, I can't stand neatness. Okay. He's like, this is how I come up with my art. Subhanallah. So you'll see a, mm. a, you know, an, a, a brush there. So, yeah. like, it's, a, it's a messy place. Mm. But what he can create, for, like just visually, it's unreal. Wow. I really enjoyed that yeah, experience. His work is very good. We yeah. wanted him to do, and we're still planning to, for him to do the main wall downstairs, the main entrance. Yeah. Uh, Graffiti. For, very, for very women. talented. Not yeah. everybody has that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's nice to be messy. It's nice mm. to, you know. Yeah, so this is why I'm interested in, in interviewing you because, you know, you will, have, um, you will have your scientists, you will have your medical doctors, you will have your engineers, yeah, um, and you, you will have your scholars even. And you will have 
creative people. You know, even some of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa time, they, they, some of them were creative. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa encouraged some and used some for the sake of da'wah, for the sake of kind of establishing and spreading Islam. Right. So then like the, the Sahaba was, were very diverse. And I feel like today we're trying to tell our youth, you all have to be like this. That's mm -hmm. the only model that you can, you can follow. Mm -hmm. Whereas we need to present to them the student of knowledge, the scholar, the activist, the doctor, and those who, who are, have, have um, a talent in, in, in creativity, creative arts, performing arts, and so right. on. And each one has to follow Islamic guidelines. Even the engineer and the, and the doctor and the lawyer, they all have their own kind of rules mm -hmm. they need to follow, mm -hmm. similar to, the, to those in, in performing arts. So Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm not saying like... <laughs> <laughs> like for example, you know the, um, what is it called? The maqamat. Right. If you start, so he, these are the rules that you have to follow. Mm. I'm saying creativity, like you know, I'm saying there are no rules, but ideally there are some rules that you have to. Otherwise mm. it, will sound, yeah. it will sound good. <laughs> yeah. Right? The principle has to be there. Right. But there are rules when it comes to like the, the notes, the, the maqamat. Mm. Da, 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 da. And then the Arabi is different. Mm. Na, 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 and then the Asians. Is, so mm. every culture has their own mm. maqamat. Even the Quran, yeah, the Quran. has maqamat. And mm -hmm. sometimes you have more khushu'ah. Exactly. Praying behind an imam. You know, someone will ask, you know, I pray behind this imam, I have khushu'ah. The mm. other imam, not really. There is something wrong with my heart. The reason is sometimes certain imams, they know when to use the miqamat when it's talking about, you know, the akhirah, paradise, the rahmah of Allah. Yeah. And then the, you know, the, the things that sh should make us have more fear of Allah, the accountability, the day of judgment and so on. And each maqam has to be appropriate for each exactly. kind of uh, theme, you can say. Yeah. Right. So, and that's the thing, like, you know, when, when, when you're reciting or when you're singing or when you're, the rules that you follow, you can follow the rule and then add your own twist. Right, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by let the creativity just, okay. you know. Yeah. And, and like you said, everybody has a talent. Mm. Everybody is good at something. Yes. So use that for the sake of Allah. Absolutely. Wa Absolutely, yes. You know, so, and that's, and that's something that I really believe in because mm. when I was doing music, mm. I was not using my talent for the sake of Allah. Right, yes. And that's why I felt, all the time I felt paranoid, I felt, I didn't feel free. Yeah. I was always guilty of yeah. the songs that I would create Absolutely. because it was, it was, if a youth listened to that, they would go astray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah, so we're going to go back to that. Um, so, you know, using our blessings for the sake of Allah. Um, so, yeah, our Prophet ﷺ said something that's interesting. This is one of my favorite hadiths. The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, do the actions, each one of you, you will be guided to what you are good for. You'll be guided to your position. And the, the path, Allah will make the path easy for you. And that path that you follow, this is what you will be best for and mm -hmm. best at. Mm -hmm. um, and there is also like a general principle that the believer who is grateful, he uses the blessings of Allah to please him. And the one who's not grateful, he uses Allah's blessings to displease him. Mm. So you, you had a talent, alhamdulillah, you discovered it. So you, you were producing at first and then you discovered your, your voice, did you yep. say? Yeah, yep. I, uh, I was probably 17 when I started singing. Right. Um, 16 maybe, 16, 17. And uh, that's when I started like, oh, people... Mm. People would like, you know, when somebody praises you and tells you, you're actually, you're good. Mm. Okay, I'm good. I can sing. All right, yeah. cool. Let me explore that avenue mm. now. Mm. Let me make more songs. Right. Right. So, alhamdulillah, I got really good at it. I got, mm. you know, good at producing music and then singing as well. And, um, and I feel like if it wasn't for that journey, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Okay. Why is yeah. that? Because the knowledge that I acquired in my jahiliya, mm. like it was very, very, you know, 
although the content was dirty, it was it was rubbish, it was you know yeah. vulgar. Yeah. But the 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 the, the skills that mm. I acquired, mm. if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be able to make vocals only songs. Mm. Vocals only nasheed, whatever you want to call it, a cappella mm. song, mm. right? I wouldn't be able to produce. Mm. Mm. Now, if you have, imagine watching some, a visual, watching something yeah. without any backing tracks, a bit dry, with yeah. no music, no vac uh, uh, vocals backing, no no nothing, no soundtrack, no really. soundtrack, nothing. It would look dry. It would, it wouldn't touch the heart, mm. Mm. right? Yeah. But when you add sound to it, mm. when you add melody to it, mm. there's more chances of that message that you're trying to convey yeah. to enter the heart. Yeah, That's what sound does. Yeah. So yeah. if it wasn't for me understanding music, mm. I wouldn't you know, be able to... Mm. Mm. How would I make a... Mm. I would always, I would always uh, count on a, another producer to mm. help me yeah. put my songs. But alhamdulillah, I had that, that skill, I gained that skill, and, you know, I, I turned it, in, I, I converted it to benefit people. Yeah. So, uh, subhanAllah, you reminded me of uh, once in, in Mecca, um, Sheikh uh, Yasser Dawsari, he's one of the imams. Oh, Yasser Dawsari, oh, mashallah. Amazing voice. Love his voice. voice. Yeah. And his voice is one of those voices that you, you will pray behind him and you feel that khushu. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah, he was reciting verses that talk about the greatness of Allah. And it was heavy rain that day. Imagine you're in the haram, nighttime, Isha, lots of rain, heavy rain, and you're hearing uh, the Shaykh recite, and then thunder sounds. As soon as he said the word Al Aziz. You Allah. hear the thunder. Allah. So even that, that's that sound, the rain and the thunder, and it had a str like a stronger uh, impact, subhanAllah. So, 17, you discovered your voice, you became very good at singing, and then there was a time where maybe you felt guilty, maybe this is not pleasing to Allah, um, and I'm sure it would have been difficult for you to give up something that you, you love so much, and maybe you were thinking there's no alternative, I just have to give it up completely. So if you could talk to us a bit about, about that part of your journey. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, I was always guilty of making that, that type of art. Mm. And all throughout university, I would, um, I would leave music. I would either sell my keyboard mm. or sell my instrument, like my, my, get rid of my software, delete it. Just avoid it completely. Avoid it completely, and then I would leave it for like three, four months, right. and then I would come back to it, buy another keyboard, install that software again, start making music, and then I would stop it again. Astaghfirullah, you know? Mm. So it was this constant battle. Right. Um, and like, subhanAllah, like, I, I never felt content. Mm. You know, a lot of people were contacting me. A lot of people were asking for my help when it came to music. A lot of people were like, hey, can you, can you produce this for me? Mm. So I was... Coming I, recognized. I was, yeah, yeah, I was respected mm. at what I do. Uh, I became so good at it, alhamdulillah. And, um, and yeah, but, but still, mm. I just felt... N it, it didn't feel right. Yeah. It did not feel right. You're right. And then it just took one person to convince me that there's a better alternative. <laughs> Okay, right? who is that? And that's Brother Buna Muhammad. Oh, Buna Muhammad yeah. from Canada. One okay. person, he was just like, you know what? Why don't you, you know, use your talent to benefit others? And he was already kind of... He was of already, yeah, he was already da doing poetry, yeah, da'wah. But he, he, like, if it wasn't for him, I don't know, like, I, w I would always think Nasheeds were cheesy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like many young people. Many young people right now, they, would, they wouldn't listen to a Nasheed. They would, mm. There's Drake, there's... Hard ads, all these ads that, mm. that you want to call them, all these like mm. mainstream names, why would they listen to Nasheed? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why don't they get the, be the, the you know? So, and that's, and that's how I felt mm. when I was younger. I was like, Nasheeds. Even though I would stop music for Ramadan and listen to Zambika, that would warrant me, <laughs> mm. you know. But I still, you know, but, but they're like, I didn't, it didn't clue in, like, I didn't, 
that light bulb moment was when he said, you can do something beneficial with your talent. Mm. That's when it hit me. I'm like, oh. You can do something you love and it's and benefit good people. and beneficial and you can get rewards. Reward? More. I'm like, what more oh. do you want? <laughs> what more? That's like the best of, you know, so that's the yeah. best deal. That's the yeah. best record deal. <laughs> right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it was that moment where I realized, I'm like, wait a minute. I can do what I love. And help people, inspire people, give da'wah, mm. and live off of it? Because it was always my dream mm. to become a producer. Right. So in high school, I looked up to Timberland, mm. Ninth Wonder, Kanye West. They would produce music and they would sell it to artists. That was my dream job. That was mm. my dream. So, but of course, like growing up in a Muslim family, you will never be, you know, you wouldn't be, um, they wouldn't, they wouldn't Sweet, respect yeah. that type of, you know, yeah. avenue that you choose, mm, mm, mm. right? So it, that, that always stopped me, mm. right? And, you know, I, I don't know why this happens, but in a lot of Muslim families, the creative arts are always neglected. Mm. Not yeah. always, but it's mostly neglected. Mm. Maybe perhaps it's because at the moment it's dominated by the wrong artists and the Maybe. wrong people. Maybe. Um, and this is one of the reasons why, why I contacted you in the first time we met and uh, we had our meetings because I, I see yourself and a few others. Um, so I can relate to what you said. Uh, so, so many people who, uh, many young people who are listening to music mm -hmm. and their advice to stop listening to music they still want an alternative. Yes, of course, the Quran is the best. Of course. The Quran is the word of Allah and subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, but, you know, some people, they just want to, they want to listen to, um, you know, sound and, and, and poetry. So then they go to Nasheed. And maybe the youth in the Middle East and abroad are different, but the ones in the West, I can imagine them not enjoying or not like liking the, the Nasheeds that exist. Some of them are very bad quality, very old. S same messages mm. and they, they would find it cheesy so when I heard your uh, recordings I thought okay look this this guy mashallah uh, he sounds mainstream it sounds kind of like the in a way you guys can revolutionize Nasheeds to uh, make it sound you know hip-hop R&B but without using uh, musical instruments and I found that very, very uh, amazing mashallah and we need to kind of promote and, and support those artists from a Muslim community point of view. Uh, mm. Because some youngsters, uh, you know, not everyone wants to be a talib al exactly. uh, Not everyone wants to do sports. You know, each person wants to do something. And there are many youngsters, you know, we done a competition a few months ago. We realized many of them, uh, the, the biggest uh, amount of participants were the performers and the artists. SubhanAllah. So we have a new generation. Um, why don't we have kind of more um, platforms for them within Islamic guidelines for them to do what they want to, what they're good at, what they're talented at, what they desire to do exactly. uh, within you know, Islamic guidelines. Yeah. Exactly. No, I, I totally agree because sometimes, I, I don't know who, who I heard this from, but somebody mentioned this, or maybe I read it in a book, but they said, a sheikh can be on the member, a scholar can be on a member, mm. and he would be giving a lecture for, for an hour or two. Mm. And then a poet would come, give the same top le lecture, in a few minutes. and it's in a few minutes, and then it would enter more hearts than yeah. the, the sheikh or the yeah. imam did. Yeah. That's art. That's, that's, that's the power of mm. art. You know? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not saying, you know, sheikhs should all stop doing, doing this. Let's just get yeah. poets on stage. No, but I'm saying sometimes. Um, and it's like the scholars and the artists need to always work together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if they do, it would be amazing because imagine that the artists have some, you know, guidance and, and support from scholars. Exactly. You know, the exactly. scholars, even researchers who are aware of the problems that Muslim youth are suffering. And will say, look, Ilyas, look, can you talk about this? You know, like you said, a sheikh can give a talk and it reaches a few hundreds, pe hundreds of people. And a poet or artist can have the same message. It reaches 
a million people or hundreds of thousands of people. Right. But I mean, like both are needed, of course. You know, we need for the tulab ilm, they need the durus, exactly. the lessons, and murabbi and the ilm. And then for for those who are not on that level, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps they they will receive motivational messages um, and and good positive messages from 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 artists. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, we're all here for. Uh, to, to hear you, inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would like to... I completely um, forgot. <laughs> I was trying <laughs> to get away from that part, but... <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. No, no. Alhamdulillah. Um, what would you like to hear? Right, so... Uh, my favorite one... Um, but I know this one, you need uh, kind of the instruments. Uh, instrumental, sorry. Um, I like the unity one. I like it a lot. You like unity? Because this one is it's what we need today. We need more unity. We need more uh, stronger brotherhood. So, you know, the, the way I see it, mm. yes, you know, the, the backing tracks and the, the, back, the back, background vocals mm. enhance the song, mm. right? But the message is the most important part. Yeah. So yeah. even if we don't have the, the, the thing playing in the background, yeah. we can still, inshallah, um, you know, benefit from the message. And this, the, the Unity track, uh, it was written by my, uh, my dear, beloved brother, Mohan. Uh, you mm. met him earlier. Yeah. Um, he's amazing with his, uh, with his words. He's a wordsmith. And, um, wow. yeah, I think, uh, I think we should do that, inshallah. Okay. Bismillah. Bismillah. <coughs> And I praise the most high as I look to the sky. Start by walking to him. Promise he'll come running. No, I never lose hope. Holding tight to his rope. Every day I pray that I stay on the straight path. Been divided long enough. Take pride because we're strong enough. Throw away your allegiances. That caused this unity. Forgive all your grievances. Let's build a community. This unity will be our fall. Our reasons for beefing are small. Scheme is we need peace for all. Believe in your dreams and stand tall. Believe in your dreams. Hey, yeah. United we stand tall, divided we fall. It's time for us to change and break these chains, yeah. Work together to succeed, show us what, show them what we can be. We just need unity. All that's good is from him. The bad is our own doing. Work together to succeed. MashaAllah, mashaAllah. You know, you know what it is, bro? <laughs> Amazing, mashaAllah, tabarakallah. Allah when you Allah. don't perform for too long, yeah, I mean, the, the lyrics, like, it, it, you got to bring it back, you know? Yeah, yeah. SubhanAllah, this, this 2020 kind of changed a lot of things. Wow. I would, I would perform every weekend, uh, you know? It's you miss like, performing, huh? Sorry, yeah, I miss performing. It was, um, it was a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very dear thing to me. Like, when I stand up on stage, I have something to say. Mm. I have a message. And people want to hear it. Well. And, and, and I hope it enters the hearts. Mashallah. And, I, and I hope that I pray Allah accepts it from Ameen. me. Ameen. Ameen. You know, so Mashallah. may Allah accept it. Ameen, Ya Rab. Ameen. We're just, you know, we're regular people. Yeah. We're just, you know, your average. But Allah gave us this talent and we need to use it to benefit people. Allahu Akbar. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mashallah. Tabarakallah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Um, I'm going to be greedy and ask, ask for another one. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, which, which one is your favorite? Or which one, like, for you was very personal to you and, uh, you know, very special to you? Some, um, yes, I mean, some, some, some of them, you know, like, you feel like there was some reflections behind that or there was, there was a reason behind this one. One of my favorite ones uh, is Spread Your Wings. Okay. Spread your wings and soar. And it's based off of the ayahs. Mm -hmm. And 
last year, 2020, has been a curveball, right, for all of us. And that peace fits perfectly with the situation that we're in. And we're still suffering. We're still, mm. you know, we can't m maneuver like we used to. You know, I miss praying side by side with my brothers, you mm. know. Mm. And we can't even do that. There's, there has to be space in between, mm. right? And mm. I miss that. And, mm. and I pray that things get back, you know, back to what it was Amen. and even better. Amen. You know, and um, yeah, so spread your wings. With every hardship comes ease. When, when was that one recorded? It was record. You know what? That was actually one of my first releases oh, right. mm. back in 2015. Okay. But I didn't release it until, you know, a, a year or two later. Mm. Mm. So that one was uh, written by my dear brother, Bona Muhammad. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. He's, uh, he's he amazing with well. his words. Mm. Um, and it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite ones. And inshallah, if you're, Yalla, if you're cool with that. Yeah, please. <laughs> All right, bismillah. <clears throat> These days, I feel like you're in pain And it feels like you're in chains So worried you can't think straight But things change like rainbows after rain And nothing ever stays the same I know you've lost your way Cause you don't know what tomorrow holds So you gotta hold on just a little more Cause in the middle of You will see this love Coming from above So just spread your wings and soar You will never know Just spread your wings and soar you will never know until you spread your wings and soar. Now embrace wisdom from mistakes. Cause Lord knows that we've strayed. But you will find your way. So be brave when hardship comes your way. Cause ease comes after pain And ease comes after pain Cause you don't know What tomorrow holds So you gotta hold on just a little more Cause in the middle of You will see this love Coming from above so just spread your wings and soar You will never know Till you spread your wings and soar You will never know Until you spread your wings and soar MashaAllah <coughs> MashaAllah Tabarakallah Allahu Akbar MashaAllah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you and reward you. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. That Ameen. was beautiful. Alhamdulillah. Zakallah um, So we have one question from the audience. Um, so someone said, that's a funny question. How do you deal with haters? How do you mm. deal with the haters? It's a very good question. Yeah. Very, very good question. Um, so when I started, you know, um, I was new, right? Mm. Uh, there were people that would that would just comment on certain things that I'm mm. doing. Mm. Like, I mean, think about it. I'm finally, I'm finally doing something for the sake of Allah. I was, <laughs> I was in a bad place. Mm. I used to do all this type of dirty music, very nasty, nasty music. And here I am, you know, making something positive for once. Mm. And then all these people are telling me, Astaghfirullah, what is this that you're doing? This is, you know what I'm saying? After you left music. Right? After, and I started oh. doing vocals, positive stuff. Nasheeds and Nasheeds. people started saying that. Okay. People started saying this. And, uh, and I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, here I am trying to do something right. And you're bringing me down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So in the beginning days, it, it would kind of affect me. And, 
and I, Alhamdulillah, I had mentors, you know, mm. like Bono Muhammad and Muslim Bilal and, mm. you know, Omar Regan and all mm. the older guys, you know, the yeah. Baba Ali, you know, Baba Ali, yeah, yeah, yeah. comedian. Yeah, I mean, Alhamdulillah, I had, I had their, you know, their, like they would, they would share their wisdom with me and stuff. And uh, mm. yeah, they, whatever you do, there are haters. Mm. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had haters. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? Like as soon as he started, you know, preaching and mm teaching about the, the, the oneness of God and, and you would have people throwing astaghfirullah like, you mm. know, things at him and stuff. Yeah. So haters will always exist. Mm. Mm. So I learned to just let them say whatever they need to say. Because mm. at the end of the day, I truly believe what I'm doing is inspiring many, many people mm. Mm. and it's helping some, uh, m many people. For example, I get messages regularly about people telling me that my tracks my pieces have helped them in get out of a dark mm. place in their life mm. they, they they might be dealing with anxiety or depression or mm. and my track my song would help them in a they would feel better mm. that's powerful of you know course. what i'm saying mm. that's powerful so I truly believe I'm doing something to benefit people. Mm. I'm making people smile. Mm. When I'm on stage, people are happy. You know what I'm saying? So, am I doing something wrong? Mm. Yeah. I, that's like, why I pray mm. Allah accepts what I'm doing. Because so, mm. I might be thinking, you know, I'm doing something right, but then, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, mm. I pray Allah accepts it for me because yeah. it's all about intentions as well. Of course, it's all about intentions and... Um, you know, there's, the, there's a difference between sincere advice from people, which we will all accept, from people who genuinely loves us and wants good for us, wants good for our akhirah, so they give us sincere, you know, advice. Um, you know, if we are making mistakes, we want someone to, to correct us. That's Umar radiallahu an, um, when he became uh, in, in, in a position of leadership, he actually employed people to look for his mistakes. Yeah, that's, that's so, really important. <laughs> so that he can, you know, not make these mistakes has an impact on, on many mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. um, however, then you have haters. It's like, you know, even the Prophet spoke about Ain and Hasad and so on. So when you're performing and you're affecting so many people, you're going to get jealous people. Yep. You're going to get people who, who will even envy. Uh, SubhanAllah, Qadarullah, may Allah protect you, will even envy that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what's the balance? Do I stop to please, you know, five, six people in comparison to the impact I can have, to, you know, with, with thousands of people? That's what they want. They want you not to be successful. They want you to, to fail. They want, they'll exactly. be happy to hear that Elias is, is, you know, doing nothing in his life. And he's, um, so it's unfortunate this, this exists and we need to always ask Allah uh, to protect us and always renew our intention and, and seek advice from, alhamdulillah, mentors. So long as we have... Um, you know, good mentors who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right. They can continue to, to advise us I want to add to that actually yeah. When I was in my other field of, mm. You know, when I was in the, in the past In yeah. my jahiliyyah I would have so many friends, you know what I'm saying And as soon as I started doing this They all disappeared out of my life mm. And now I'm hanging out with shuyukh mm. I'm hang, hanging out with people who, who study the deen SubhanAllah I have, I have scholars in my WhatsApp, mm. you know what I'm saying? So whenever, alhamdulillah, like my entire life changed mm. for the better, mm. you know? So whatever they say, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's funny because like, if you were doing music, you wouldn't get these haters. <laughs> they you were, never know, you yeah. never know. Whatever, like I said, whatever you do, you will get haters, yeah. but no matter what, no I matter like what you do. sometimes when you're trying to do the right thing, uh, you get more haters. Yeah, that's yeah. why, I've, you know, it's like, uh, like we have some, um, don't want to get into politics, this is a different topic, but like, you know, you have so many secular and liberal political parties. No one says anything about them. But the moment you have an Islamic party, so oh, they have so many mistakes, they have so many yeah, issues. I, I hear what you're um, saying. Yeah, it's like, look, okay, they're not perfect, but it's, it's a better alternative than, Of course, you know, of course. Alhamdulillah. Um, May Allah protect us from, from, from these We've got some more interesting people. questions. Um, okay, so uh, this is an important one. Those who are thinking, you know what, Elias is doing good 
good stuff and I want to do something similar. I think I have talent as well. I have, I have a good voice. And if I can do it, if I can still practice my deen, not displease Allah, and kind of uh, do what I love doing, mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you give to, to young people like that? So, first and foremost, you have to believe in yourself. Mm. First, that's the number one thing, because if you believe that you have a talent, if you, if you believe that you can help people with your talent, then invest time in it. Mm. Invest time, effort, money. Mm. Invest in, in your art if you believe that you have it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, have good mentors around you. Mm. Have good people around you that are gonna that are gonna you know uh, keep you away from the bad. Right. It it all depends on your circle. Mm -hmm. You know how many times where business people would want to start something and mm. then their own circle would be like, nah, that's not that's not gonna work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nah, that's city idea. So many people have done it, man. Come on, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So people. Be around positive people. Positive, not negative. Yeah. People who will uplift you. Mm, a uptips. team. Mm. Unfortunately, it's hard. Like, it's hard for a lot of artists to, to find like, a team that will mm. back them, you know? Mm, 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 mm. Sometimes it gets lonely. Yeah. It gets very, very lonely. So that's why like, I wish there was like, a, a machine that could help us, all of us artists, mm. to just... Don't worry about, you know, your, your income. We'll take care of it. Here, mm. just, just, just do art. Mm. You know, we'll pay you a salary. Just do art. Mm. Imagine mm. we could go from here to here, bro. Yeah. Like, it, here, here, uh, Elias, this is for you. Just produce us five albums. Uh, Bona, make us five films. Muslim Bilal, make us drama series. Mm. Uh, Omar Regan, we, I wish we had... It is the fun, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 it's needed, yeah. the machine. SubhanAllah. Right? And, mm. and there are people that are very, very... That, that could change the entire thing yeah. and help us. But yeah. unfortunately, we're all lone wolf. Lone wolves. Yeah. Yeah, right. I wish there was that as well, where we have a, you know, a system, like even Beit al Mal, you know, supporting the artists, supporting the dua, supporting each, each like people with a field that has an impact on, a good impact on others. Because we all have the same objective, even like dua and artists, they want to have a good impact on others. And there's so much we can relate to, uh, you know, the, because it's the same with dua. Some of them want to give da'wah full time, but they need to work. You know, no one's going to pay them to give da'wah, so they need to... They, they you know, need to feed families. And, and so 100%. On. I, I hear you, and it's hard. Mm. It's mm. very hard. Mm. You know, alhamdulillah, I was able to think creatively and think of ways to... Because look, mm. when I first started doing nasheeds, yeah. I had quit my job. Right. And I was, I was like, okay, so I got to figure it out. I have a, I have a two-month-old son. Mm. You know, I have a wife. I, I got to bring food to the table. I was the only breadwinner at the, at the time, mm. right? And I was forced to do Uber. I had a professional job, but the fact that I didn't like it and I, you know, it, it was just, it was bringing me down, mm. you know? It was, it was just, instead of me growing within this company, they would just bring me down all the time. Mm. So I was like, I can't have this. It's negative mm. energy, right. right? So I started doing Uber. And I, I was grinding. I was doing Uber for like two years, you know, mm. and, and doing performances, nasheeds on mm. the side, mm. right? Every weekend I would get invited by this guy. You know what I'm saying? So until, alhamdulillah, like, I, <laughs> I stumbled upon a career path that I never thought about. Mm. So, and, and inshallah, like, you know, uh, you know, when it's time, yeah. if you want me to talk about my... You know, my, my initiatives, my, what I'm trying to do. Yeah, please. Um, so, I got, like, so remember, if we, if we go back to, uh, like, 10, 10, 20 minutes ago, when mm. I told you my dream job was okay. to be a producer. Yeah, okay. Is that still your dream? That was, I'm living my dream. Allahu Akbar, alhamdulillah. I'm finally living my dream. Mashallah. I'm doing, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, and may Allah, you know, increase it yeah. for me and put barakah in it for me, Amen. because... 
at this point in my life, I've never felt so content. Mm. I felt like Allah, I feel like Allah has been so good to me. Alhamdulillah. You know, I'm living my dream right now. I'm I established Vocal Tunes. If you can see my sweater, yeah. Vocal Tunes is a is a is a platform. Um, it's very it's it's going to revolutionize the whole thing. Inshallah, bismillah. Right. Um, so I, I don't know if I told you if I mentioned earlier I produce for a living. Okay. So I was doing Uber for two years and then my production business. Mm. Alhamdulillah, it, it, it mm. became fruitful and um, I had more clients and so what I do is I create vocals only background for okay. videos, right. uh, movies, right. for other artists. So remember when we said, yeah. imagine watching a movie with no backing yeah, vocals, yeah, yeah. so that's what I do. Excellent, this is what was missing, because even like in our organization, many organizations, we have this issue where we do like let's say highlight videos or trailers yeah. or adverts because marketing is ex extremely important even in Islamic organization but we don't have uh, you know we can't use music of course and um, the nashis are all kind of not appropriate for, for our audience so <laughs> <laughs> typical <I know. laughs> that's been overplayed <laughs> Overused. So it's good, you know. Imagine you can like a, local tunes now. And imagine yeah. a boxing uh, advert. Yeah. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> so that's why we we started me and my team. Alhamdulillah, mm. we started Vocal Tunes, and it's gonna mm. launch this month, inshallah. Okay, so that's inshallah. an exciting thing. Excellent. And it's I'm so like, like I'm amped to release this because it's gonna have a catalog of hundreds really? of backing vocals to choose from for okay. your video. For mm. this artist, if, if artists want to bring their ideas and they want to make a song, we, we're able to help them Excellent. make their dreams come to reality. Good, good, good. Right? So the catalogs, uh, the categories include, you know, inspirational backings, mm. uplifting backings, nice. backings like a soundtrack for movies. Good, good, good. Um, and, uh, you know, exercise, tra uh, mm. you know, uh, backings, comedy, yeah. hip hop. All types of Excellent. categories. Yeah, I think this will definitely revolutionize. This is what, what we need now that Muslims, alhamdulillah, young Muslims, we, we have with us actually here in the youth center, a 17-year-old mm -hmm. who has produced around uh, five short films. MashaAllah. And he's a, he's a filmmaker, very talented. And this is an example of thousands of youth that exist who are very talented in videography, photography. Right. Like, it's a new generation. So definitely within five years, you're going to expect uh, mainstream films, Hollywood quality films that are produced by young Muslims. So imagine we have that partnership with the likes of Vocal Tunes, where exactly. we can, you know, you, you're you're the sound. Uh, what do they call them? Sound manager or so, um, so audio engineer, audio sound engineer, yeah, you know, composer, and have soundtracks of, of, the, yeah. of the movie. And and that. that's the thing, like we're not using any musical instruments. Mm. So Vocal Tunes, you, you can tell by the the the, the name tunes. Vocal Tunes, all vocals. You know, and 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 hand account like finger snaps, mm. and you know some some sound effects like you know birds and rain, and mm, mm, we natural, use yeah. we use natural sound effects, and yeah, and uh, can, that's yeah, I kind of see as well that instead of us Muslims following um, the the genres that and 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 the categories that exist, we make our own one. It could be exactly ethical Muslim, you know, uh, uh, music, and funny because. Um, you know Ahi, right? Oh, yeah. Ahi from Iman I know him really well. Um, so he used to know, like a long time ago, he used to know all these artists, mm -hmm. very famous artists, mm -hmm. um, who, are, who are very famous now, but he knew them when they were what you call underground, right. not famous, yeah. And now they contact him because he does sound, he does um, vocals only. Yeah, um, yeah. So he does it for, for Iman Chano and others. And they contact him, they're, they're known mainstream artists now. They, they say, We like what you do. Subhanallah. And you're doing you it see? without music. You I see? want that challenge. I want to. I want to try. It. I want to do a track with no music, and I want it to to sound good. <laughs> Why can't we be the trendsetters? Mm. Why can't we have our own genre where even mainstream get inspired? And it's it's dawa at the end of the of day. Of course, because it's our own policies. It's our own right? guidelines. Clean, our own no swearing. Authentic. Yeah. Right. 
Why yeah. can't we? Why? Why do we always have to say, "Oh, the, the halal version of this," or the Muslim version of this song, mm. or why? Us and them, and let's you know, let's take from them. Let's, let them take from us, maybe. Inshallah. I I feel like if we just all came together and supported each other, mm. you know, and and went under one umbrella and worked together and empower each other. Yeah, absolutely. We would we would be on the top. Absolutely. I think some. Um, will ask about uh, the hukum, yeah, the, the ruling, uh, Islamic jurisprudence, the ruling behind um, you know, what you guys are doing. And uh, I think it's important that we clarify. Um, that's where you come live. in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that's your avenue right there, so, <laughs> your department. Uh, so I actually did look into this when I, when I was studying in Medina. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, of course, they didn't, they didn't teach me that in Medina, uh, but I did, I did some research in, into this. Mm -hmm. And there is, there's two categories when it comes to ruling, uh, to do with singing and... One says it's mustahab, it's encouraged, it's rewardable. Mm. And one says it's mubah. Mm. Mubah meaning it's halal, it's permissible. Mm -hmm. and it becomes permissible uh, for no reason, yeah? If, if, like, the original ruling is that it's permissible. And in Islam, the rulings are that al-asl, like, everything is halal, originally. Except if there is, like, an evidence, exactly. you know, and not to say it's haram. Yes. But with ibadah, like, when we're praying and stuff, everything is haram unless... You have a nas and, and uh, evidence from the Quran or the Sunnah to say that it's halal. Mm. We can't make up our own ibadah. We can't exactly. say, you know, let's do X, Y, Z in salah. And Subhanallah. Salah. So when does it become mustahab? When does it become like, you know, rewardable? In moments when, in moments when um, there is some benefits. So, for example, the scholars of the past and Subhanallah, some of the classical scholars even spoke about this. Um, when, it, when the mother sings to her son or her child to put him to sleep, she's being rewarded for that. Because sometimes the son or the baby can't sleep, so the mother sings. Or when the wife sings for her husband. Or, for example, in the wedding, right? We have a wedding. I'm not going to bring a sheikh to talk about, you know, at taqullah and, de and death and, and yawm al qiyamah and stuff. You know, yeah. it's my wedding. I want to have fun. I'll bring Ilyas and we'll have some, <laughs> some fun and, and, and joy. So it's entertainment in the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And we are humans. This is, of course. And I, I think a lot of people fall into extremism. Yeah. In my opinion, they, they burn out because they go against even their fitrah. You know, the Prophet said, Sa'atun Sa'a. You know, one hour ibadah, one hour dhikr, one hour for your Lord, and one hour no harm doing some ledger, you know, like playing football. Nothing wrong with that. Going on an adventurous trip, swimming, like do all of these exciting adventurous activities. Go yeah. for it. What's stopping you? And singing is, is a form of entertainment. You know, you listen to it and, and you feel joy, you feel happy, you feel in a, in a good mood. So imagine in, in a wedding, you know, there's, there's a good practicing brother and he, he's got a good voice. Bismillah, bring him. He, he will be rewarded for that. Subhanallah. You know, subhanallah. there's 500 people who are sitting, listening to him and they feel good. Mm. The sheikh might be sinful, yeah? If he brings the mic and starts <laughs> depressing people <laughs> <laughs> about <laughs> death and stuff. And the scholars, they spoke about this. They call it fiqh al-da'wah. The fiqh of da'wah. They said fiqh al-da'wah is when, when there's a janazah prayer happening and when you're Burying someone is dead. It's not permissible for someone to come and give a reminder of the virtues of marriage and, yeah. okay. <laughs> and, and, and so on. And likewise, it's not permissible for someone to go to a wedding mm. and talk about death and so on. Oh, okay. And the reason for that is because people would, will, will turn away. Of course. You know, you, you will make people turn against the religion. And I've seen that where someone is not that practicing, he's still new, mm -hmm. he's not on your level. Uh -huh. And you go and tell him this is haram and this is wrong and... They think, you know what, I'm not interested in coming, you know, being religious. If yeah. being religious is like you, yeah. miserable guy, I don't want to be religious. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so originally it's, 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 it's halal and sometimes it becomes rewardable, you know, like, like weddings, like singing to your wife. You know, I remember someone saying, 
uh, actually he, he, he gave a fantastic suggestion. Someone, um, he's newly married, right? Mm -hmm. And he was abroad and um, he wanted to give a gift to his wife for his first anniversary. Now, anniversary, there's a difference of opinion if we should celebrate or not. But let's just say he followed that opinion yeah. that he can. Uh, so he said, what, what can I get for her? You know, like uh, I can send her flowers. I can do X. Well, I want to do something different. So someone said to him, why don't you sing? To him? He's like, no, I can't sing. I don't have a voice. It's like, yeah, that's the whole point. Like, imagine, you know, you're not a singer, but you, you write something for her and you sing. Yeah. So what he did, he actually, you know, sang. Right. And he made like a small video with yeah. some pictures of, you know, nice moments. And he sent that to her. That's it. He got 10 years brownie points. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years, huh? only 10 years. <laughs> so it, something like this is rewarded for right, it. Right, right. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Um, so yeah, it's important to remember that. Okay, we'll take the last question. And someone wants you to, to perform one last time. Um, Okay, yeah, that's, that's an important one. Advice to those who want to or are trying to stop listening to music. Listen to us. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Simple. So, music is very, very powerful. Mm. Very, very powerful. Um, it's hard. It's hard to stop listening to music. Yeah. You know, and that's that was part of my journey. Mm. Remember I told you I would stop and then mm. start again, stop. So we are working so hard to provide alternatives mm. with what we do. Mm. Unfortunately, we're limited yeah, in numbers. Mm. How many artists are there? <laughs> you can count, mm. you know, versus the mainstream, the hundreds and thousands of artists, mm. right? In our field, we're very limited. Mm. Right, and we're trying our best to provide alternatives to the dirty music that's out there. Mm. And I say dirty because we have our kids. You got you got kids. I got kids. Mm. We go to the shopping center to buy something, and the music that's playing on the uh, mm. speaker system—it's the worst, most vulgar music ever. <laughs> it's very sex, overly sexualized. Mm. It's over like they're talking about drugs. And it's, and it's in the shopping centers where our kids, like we, we go to buy something, clothes or whatever it is, and they're blasting it. And that's what I mean. Like, I feel like they're trying to mislead the youth. Subhanallah. I yeah. feel like that's their main goal. Their just mission. to, mm. you know, they're praising all of these like artists that are, that are talking about drugs, killing, stabbing, shooting. Mm. Uh, they're objectifying women. And it influences their behavior. It what, influences what their hear. behavior. Yeah. It's so disgusting. Girls think that's how you should be. Mm. They think that's how I should dress to get attention. Guys think, oh, I guess this is how I need to treat this woman. Mm. This is how I need to treat, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, mm. subhanAllah, like, it's, it's a very crazy world that we live in right now. It's crazy. You know, <laughs> I, I, I ran into, um, I don't know when this was, but this 17-year-old, he's, he's calling a girl the B word. It's, this is a human being. Imagine somebody called your sister the B word. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So that's the reality. And we're trying to provide alternatives. Yeah. We don't have machines that are backing us. We yeah. don't have... The yeah. thousands and the hundreds of thousands of dollars of yeah. marketing that's going into this. Just for one video. The most yeah. disgusting things they're, pro they're promoting. Yeah. You know, so just think about that. So that would you rather yeah. listen to mm. that or mm. would you la rather listen to something clean? Mm. Right? Mm. So it's, it's really hard. It's, yeah. it's really tough, you know. Mm. Um, and that, that goes out for the youth. I'm pretty sure their, their music that's out there that's, mm. you know, they... It's not that dirty, right? Yeah, but yeah, I'm talking yeah. about what's promoted right nowadays. Mm, 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 absolutely, right? yeah. And I think that adds to my previous point in regards to um, we said about the weddings and the woman, uh, the mother singing to her son, and we can add to that. 
to to fight the evil, to, to have an alternative. And I see that this is you know similar to jihad in a way, mm. where you are combat combating evil. And if there are people who are spending billions, uh, you know, um, and, and bringing the best ideas together, bringing the best experts together on one table for the sake of spreading evil, why can't we, the good people, the believers, come together, bring the best experts, bring the most creative people, bring the best ideas, bring our wealth together, mm -hmm. and go against, you know, fight the evil and spread more good. We need to do more, more of that. You know, I, I actually heard one of my brothers... Uh, very talented um, brother, and I'm pretty sure you know, you know his name. I'm not going to mention his name, but okay. he was making a movie, and he approached an investor. Right. I'm making this movie. I'm from the industry. Help me make this movie. You know, I, I need the budget to hire the best camera crew, mm. this and that. They're like, uh, they're, they don't see the benefits. Yeah, yeah. But then their kids mm. are... You know what I'm saying? They're, and they're worried about, oh, we got to save our youth. We got to save our kids. Mm, true. But why don't you help, you know, the creatives mm. to, to become examples for the youth? Yeah. This could be sadaqah, subhanAllah. Uh, as important because they're going to be the children who would solve the problems of the future. They will be the children, inshallah, who will help our brothers and sisters in Syria and Palestine you know, if we work on guiding them today. Exactly. So it's a long-term investment. So and I'm, imagine mm. making movies based on the history of Islam. Like, mm. imagine a show based on the, you know, the, 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 the moment when, uh, you know, Bilal, mm. he, he was appointed to, you know, do, do the adhan. Imagine a, an entire movie wow. based on a, a, a something that happened. Mm. Like, we don't even know our history. No. A lot of us, we don't know the history no. of, you know? Yeah, yeah, subhanAllah. I think we'll end with um, uh, a, a piece that to, this week we were speaking on the phone and you mentioned earlier that sisters or, or, or females who are listening to that type of music and believing that this is the image I need to be. And we mentioned this week on the phone that um, we should work together where if there are some issues that we feel like the youth are facing, we speak to you and the other artists to maybe um, kind of, uh, in a way, address these issues. Mm -hmm. And s s as well as the khutaba and the du'ats, they do their part in their masajid. You do your part in that industry. Right. And one of the, the, the issues we were talking about is sisters who are trying to get married, let's say, and they don't have... Uh, kind of role models, they don't have guidance of mm. how to approach marriage. Yeah. So you mentioned that what's growing as well is that some, some people taking advantage of sisters exactly. and uh, sisters being mistreated and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to protect our sisters. But you actually wrote something about or, or you uh, yeah. performed and recorded something. Uh, yeah. If you could tell us about that and then if, if, uh, if you may maybe uh, sing it for us inshallah. Right, so, so with Whatever I create, with whatever song I make, I make sure that there's substance to it. Right. I make sure that it's. I, I make sure that it can benefit someone, mm -hmm. even if it benefits one person. I'll make that song. Okay. So when when we make a song, it, there's a lot of there's like a criteria mm. that we have, right? Right. Now I can sit here all day and record songs about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our beloved Prophet. I can sit here all day praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can sit here all day, like there's a place and time for this. Mm. But what about the current issues that we're that we're facing right now? Mm. Mm. That's why I made a song about addiction. Aware is about addiction. Okay. Um, I made a song about unity, rising rising mm. up so unity. Issues, yeah. uh, I made a song about praising Allah for what He's given me. Mm. Remember to thank Allah mm. for what He's given. Blessed. That's one of my favorite mm. ones. Mm. I made a song about, you know, after hardship comes ease. Mm. Right? I like to sing about current issues and personal issues. Personal yeah. issues and mm. you know. Mm. Yeah. So one of the songs that I made, um, and it, it was a, it was a, an, an, an honest advice to sisters uh, looking for marriage and how, you know, and this is 
this is something I've seen growing up uh, in university mm. when I was in the within the MSA and right. you know and you got some brothers that try to take advantage of sisters and you know and it's 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 an issue that that exists and these these things happen in universities and high schools mm. right so it's just an honest advice to basically let the let my sister know that you know if he's not doing this for the sake if, he, if he's not serious for the sake of Allah if he doesn't even look there there are guys who say hey let me wake you up for Fajr but he doesn't even pray <laughs> you know what I'm saying give me your number let me wake you up for Fajr <laughs> like he doesn't even, you know so you got these brothers out mm. there and I'm not I'm not like calling out all the brothers like that's not mm. n not all of us are like that <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. but there are some brothers that that take advantage and um, mm. and it's called He Don't Love You okay. and I released it um, I think 2018, 2019 right. it's on YouTube um, yeah so that was that was the song okay. yeah. Bismillah oh, <laughs> oh you Can want I me to perform it? it? <laughs> okay. see how I'm trying to get away <laughs> Give this you know <laughs> it's so like it's very different when Mm. When you don't have a an audience, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. like because there are audiences, yeah, so like <laughs> brothers in the back, <laughs> and 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 mm. pardon me if I forget the lyrics because it's been yeah over a year since I performed. If you forget, this. just do the humming part, <laughs> <laughs> or should I do? <laughs> <laughs> so um, it goes. <clears throat> oh man, I haven't performed this in like oh, a man. year. Okay, bismillah. <clears throat> you don't want to say it's true. Your heart never felt this before. You're looking for half your dean, but you might need to look some more. Late night on the telephone, can't wait to hear his voice. But girl, don't you know he's playing you like a drum making all that noise. The more you join in his games, the more he will disappoint. And if he don't fear Allah, then you know that there ain't no point. Talking, talking about he's going to marry you, fill your life with tons of joy. But he don't want to tell your dad you need a man, but he's just a boy. Because he don't love you. He might sound right, but he, but he just want to waste your time. He don't love you. You'll be the first to cry when he's all done with his lies. He don't love you. If he thinks that love is all that a marriage needs, then he don't love you. You better trust me, girl. There ain't a man that's worth your dean. Romance got you in a trance and you don't know what to do. Do -do -do -do. Heart beats like a thousand miles every time he talks to you. Friends say you don't understand, don't listen to what you're told Thinking maybe he's the one, but everything that glitters ain't gold And I know that it's hard, and you can't take no more So bit, so, uh, so believe, so don't, uh And then it goes, it goes You want a man? He goes, he goes, you want a man? Uh, you want, uh, you need a man? Ah, oh, man, it's been a while, yeah, bro. I wish I can help you, but... <laughs> Not a boy. Yeah. Uh, MashaAllah, that's fantastic, MashaAllah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, a very, very important uh, message. Um, yeah. SubhanAllah, for always to do things the, the correct way um, will always protect us, SubhanAllah. Um, that's why, you know, getting uh, wellies involved and whoever's involved. Because uh, a man knows a man. Of course. You know, like they say that if, he, if, a, if a burglar wants to steal a house, there could be the latest cameras. And if he knows there's no men there, mm -hmm. it's not going to stop him. Mm -hmm. If he mm -hmm. knows there's a man there, he's not going to take that risk, you know. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, subhanAllah. I just realized, subhanAllah, like, you know, and, and, and they say this for Qadis. Mm. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just going back. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm just reflecting on this performance. Okay. Um, it's so important for Qadis Qurra mm. to revise. Okay. Hafiz to revise the Quran. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. Because even if you are Hafiz, you, you might forget, forget right? Yeah, you will forget, yeah. 
And subhanAllah, I guess that's that that's the same thing that applies to machines yeah, as yeah, well. No, yeah, yeah. Even like, with students of knowledge when they memorize uh small books or po yeah. poems, if you don't revise it, you will forget. You'll the, forget it, subhanAllah. Two, three months if you didn't read it, that's it. Wow. It's, gone. it's not easy. <laughs> I can't believe like these are the songs that are so dear to me and you know I, I, wow it's I, f I forget the lyrics subhanallah subhanallah, subhanallah. but yeah this this year has uh yeah man it's crazy Any, like <laughs> new targets and goals for 21 2021 uh yes absolutely um vocal tunes is going to come out this year inshallah. inshallah um i have i have uh tracks in the pipeline Nice. That I'm gonna release, inshallah. One for Yasin Youth, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. You never know. You never know, guys. Keep uh, keep in tuned. Um, so basically, when I release something, it's like, okay, here you go, bye. <laughs> you know, like I release it on YouTube, and that's it. I move mm. on to the next track. Sure. So that's what I usually do, and mm. um, yeah, this year there's gonna be more releases, inshallah, more videos. Inshallah. So you know, it's it's a. Uh, I have to keep going. Inshallah. I have to keep going. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, we'll make dua now, inshallah, to, Insha to end this uh, live stream, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Hamdan Kathira, wa salatu wa salama ala ashraf al-mursaleen, Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وطهر لنا قلوبنا مم. اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم آتي قلوبنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم كن بعون إخواننا المستضعفين في اليمن وفي الصومال وفي فلسطين وفي سوريا وفي مم. اليمن مم. يا رب العالمين Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who hears us, the one who knows all of our affairs, the one who knows what's inside our hearts, we ask you to keep us steadfast, we mm -hmm. ask you to show us the truth, we ask you to keep us guided upon your straight path, we ask you to be pleased with us, we ask you to forgive our sins, we ask you to purify our hearts, we ask you to accept our tawbah and our repentance, we ask you, Ya Allah, to make us means of khair, we ask you to guide the youth of the UK and the West, we ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us enter paradise and you are pleased with us. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks a lot. I wanted to show you something before we go off. So we got these chairs that are new. So if you go back a bit. Oh! You can go like that. Okay. <laughs> For the break. <laughs> oh, all the way. <laughs> all the way. Bismillah. Ah, what a way to end so that's the night. A good way to end, inshallah. Good night, Until everybody. Next time, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah <laughs> ar-Rahman.